feel a little bit like um, I'm in the beginning of a bad joke, a creative in a room full of planners trying to explain what an insight is. Um, I guess you guys know what an insight is because you're planners. Um, and the obvious answer from a creative point of view is an insight is something that gives us a platform um, of which to jump to um, a great creative work. So what I thought might be more useful um, is to go a little bit off brief <laughs> um, and talk a bit about different types of creatives um, and what I think the different types of insights that lead to, um, to, to different work. So when I, um, oops, because does it go back? Can I go back? <laughs> I don't do clickers. Um, so when I first started in advertising in the kind of late 80s, um, it was not lo long after the birth of the planning function. Um, and actually, when I started, they didn't have planning. I was at um, McCann Erickson, and they didn't have planning as a department. It's kind of a, um, it came out of media. I am old enough that media was part of agencies then. Um, and it was explained to me at that point that um, an insight was um, something that was d this d distillation of you know, all of the research and the desk work and everything that people had um, gone about and been busy and sort of charged the client for and they distilled it down into this magic um, elixir. Um, and that was the insight of which we as creatives um, would then use to, to create great work. Um, and and I, I guess this was quite a black and white um, approach to insights and kind of the guys have been referring a bit to in the early days of, um, of insights it was you know they, there was things like um, you know give me the freedom of, a, of a, um, a closed brief and there was this very much a sense of um, that the clients felt very confident if um, you know the crafting of the insight was absolutely in um, Nick referred to before that sort of is it believe or is it want and if we can absolutely get that in a, in a very concrete form um, then, then it's something that the client buys into and then, then there was a, um, a feeling that creatives shouldn't um, depart from that, that you should stick your, your creative work very closely um, to, to the insight. Um, and I have to say as a creative person I find that um, slightly difficult to be in the world of black and white and as creatives we usually are more comfortable in grey. Um, and I have put a quote in my, because um, I thought they're planners, they like quotes. Uh, so people will always prefer black and white over shades of grey. And so there will always be the temptation to hold oversimplified beliefs and to hold them with excessive confidence. Um, and this would be my criticism of insights um, and as a creative person where the frustration can come from. Because I think we do like um, to be able to explore further and to move away from uh, the very uh, strong beliefs and, and this oversimplification is sometimes not uh, the, the jumping off point that um, you may believe. Um, so to explain a little bit um, about the, my um, kind of belief on the different types of creatives and it, kind of to explain a bit about me, I came from um, uh, predominantly, most of my career has been in direct and digital. Um, and then recently I've gone um, to uh, Kamarama, which is obviously comes from an advertising um, background. And I'm kind of dealing, so I've, I've spent my career dealing with different types of, of creatives. And I've come to the opinion that um, creatives are either creationists or evolutionists. Um, and creationists, I think, are the ones that um, Typically, from above the line, they spent they they get their insight, and then they um, and there's this idea of concept, a perfectly formed concept, and they will craft it, and they will close the door, and they will craft, and they will form, and this concept then gets delivered to the world, and paid media um, is behind it, and an idea is born, um, which is a, you know is very valid um, method of of communicating a message to um, consumers. The area I'm probably more um, familiar with and more used to creatively directing um, is evolutionists. And we tend, in, especially um, in digital, we tend to take data and we um, use the, the insights that come from the data and our creative work um, evolves over time and we look at behaviour and we evolve. And so it's a slightly different, you don't, um, and that's one of the things I'm finding really interesting about Kamarama is because I have both types of creatives is looking at the creationists and the evolutionists. Often they can come up to a set fairly similar place, um, and, but the insights come from a very different, a different methodology, um, which is interesting. So the creationists, um, yeah, the, the idea of, um, kind of the creation of, of Adam, 
um, I think that there is um, a risk that in doing that you're missing um, uh, with, the, with the insight, um, and I, th I can't remember who said it, but this idea of the door is locked after the insight is locked in, um, that you, you can't change it. And that for me is, is quite a frustrating, um, a frustrating thing. I think it's because there is a sense that, you know, like the Ten Commandments, it's written in, in stone um, and it can't be changed. And the evolutionists, on the other hand, because they're constantly changing um, and looking for um, what consumers, are, how they're reacting, and particularly on social platforms, which is um, an area which I um, work a lot in, is your this sort of um, thought of the real-time creative direction you're constantly looking. Uh, so rather than written stone, there's this idea that the insight is more mercurial um, and it can be flexible. Um, and I think that's an interesting thing to think about when you're creating insights and uh, the evolution of insights, if you like, I think should go from being written in stone to something that's more mercurial because I think it's more useful um, to modern creatives. So, yeah, you get, and as I said before, I find it really interesting because I work with a lot of data planners now um, and have in my, in my um, career, but I'm also working with lots of brand planners now. And I noticed that um, my colleagues in the um, data planning world will get there by looking at the evidence and, and the belief to get their insight. And the um, planners in the um, kind of... Uh, advertising world will very much often um, trust their gut instinct to get to the insight. Um, and they will both distill it down. And they often will get to the same place. As one of the data planners said to me the other day, he said, we get there. It just takes us longer um, because they're looking at, at the data. But I think there is an interesting way of, um, of looking at where insights come from um, and how, uh, how as creatives we can use it. Um, and this is one of my pet subjects. Uh, for me, um, day, uh, insight that comes from, um, from data and from that is more mercurial, I guess, leads us to work that is about how brands behave um, versus, uh, I think, the more um, traditional construct of insights that lead to what brands would say. Um, and so, again, kind of an argument for having insights that are um, more flexible, more mercurial than set in stone, because I think... Uh, particularly today, brands need to be able to behave um, in a certain way rather than constantly be saying um, a, a statement. Um, I use this analogy a lot, but it is like the comedian who um, gets up and tells jokes rather than the comedian who gets up and um, says, I'm funny. And, you know, I think um, a lot of my clients at the moment want to be the comedian who gets up and tell good jokes, not the comedian um, who has to get up and spend a lot of money saying that he's funny. Uh, I am also a big fan of Dirt is Good. And one of the reasons is because I think actually this did come from a set in stone uh, distilled insight. Um, I worked with this about 10 years ago. Um, and it was one, of, the reason I put it up, and it's, um, Tracy and I just had a whisper comment, that's not the insight, that is the idea. The insight I thought was brilliant. It was actually before I had children. Um, and actually since I've had children, I've realized how even more brilliant the insight is that um, actually what mothers um, are looking for in, in nurturing their children is not having them um, always dressed in white, but actually having them express their creativity. Um, and I just thought I've got a bit of a landscape of, of this work. Um, what was interesting with the first piece of um, work was fairly typical traditional broadcast advertising statement that might come off the inside um, for whatever life throws. And it's um, you know exactly what you might expect off that inside and then that idea. But what's interesting what happened, because I think it is quite a generous um, and, and mercurial insight, um, is that it turned into, well, actually, it's the expression um, of creativity through children, um, which I think is a much more interesting and profound um, insight and something that really connects with, um, with parents in a much more profound way. But then um, what it also enabled um, creatives to do is put the reflection back on to mothers, which I think, again, as an insight, um, makes it incredibly interesting to work with, um, particularly in the social and, and digital and direct spaces. Um, be a mum you can mess with. And this was around a, a proximity of platform that we worked a lot with is what does it mean as a mum and what tools and how can I facilitate and enable 
um, that that to happen um, through and, and Percival is just there as the facilitator of that which again you know when you can take from that insight that was designed to create an ad and start to move into that area I think it's really interesting um, and still now you know the social um, on the social platforms they're talking to grandparents they've moved into lots of different spaces um, which I, again from from an insight that was created 12 years ago and a lot of this work is global uh, so it works across borders um, across generations and I said I think oh my god it must be 12 15 oh, I feel like it was 10 years ago I dealt with it because my eldest is 11 and I don't didn't definitely have, didn't have children when I first started working with it uh, and then um, yeah it's quite sort of interesting to go then complete the circle and see that the advertising that's uh, off the back of it still today it's you know and I talk about a great insight is like a cocoon that um, lots of extraordinary butterflies uh, come out of and, and can land all over the media landscape and I think this is a great example of a cocoon an insight that's a cocoon that still today they've moved away from you know the child in the in the um, in the painted um, smog to the creation and the wonder of imagination of children so that for me is a great insight